Go on. Tie you. You wish you go. Good afternoon, viewers. Welcome to another Angry Bulletin. Well, China is at it again. Another long march to sea, launching from the Xichang launch facility, which is deep inside Chinese territory. Of course, one of the reasons that most Western nations do their very best to launch from coastal spaceports is in case something like this happens, they would prefer to have the rocket come plunging down on to an ocean rather than a populated area. China, however, continues to demonstrate that they could care less about the safety of their own citizens, just as much as they could care less about the safety of people around the world every time one of their boosters re-enters the atmosphere in an uncontrolled fashion when they put up a particularly heavy payload. But here's what's a lot more frustrating about all of this. This particular mission, the Space-Based Multiband Astronomical Variable Objects Monitor, or SVOM, mission is not an exclusively Chinese mission. It is, in fact, a collaboration between China and France, or more specifically, the CNES Agency, or the Centre National d'Etudes Spatiales. And I'm pretty sure I mispronounced that, but I gave it my best shot. In any event, regardless of how it's pronounced, why is France continuing to collaborate with China, especially on missions like this? It is well known that China is stealing any technology that happens to get integrated into their one of their rockets, and more importantly, China continues to launch these rockets from deep inside their own territory with a complete disregard for their safety of their citizens. Now, it doesn't look like anybody got killed or injured by this particular crash, at least as far as we know, but it's a highly toxic fuel that's inside this rocket, something that would be very dangerous to anybody who happened to approach it, but more importantly, there is a lot of precedent for extremely deadly accidents to take place with launches like this, the most significant of which was a disastrous mishap with a Long March 3 rocket on February 15, 1996, launching the American Intelstat 708 satellite. At a time when the American launch industry was at its lowest point and we were starting to embrace other launch providers, in order to get satellites into orbit a little bit more affordably. This one had disastrous consequences, smashing straight into a village and killing an unknown number of people. Officially, six people were killed and 57 injured. However, the Western media speculated that between a few dozen and up to as many as 500 people were killed in the crash, given the enormous amount of damage that this explosion wrought on a heavily populated region. And by the way, since this disaster took place, this particular town has been wiped off the face of the earth. China completely evacuated it, leveled all the buildings, and there is very little evidence that this town was ever there to begin with. Again, typical with Chinese whitewashing techniques, wiping all details of the event from the face of the earth, and then telling the next generation that the event never happened in the first place, as was the case with the Tiananmen massacre, but this is something we expect from China. This is something that all of us know that China is going to do. What we don't expect is other very respected Western space agencies to continue to collaborate with an agency that does things like this. If there were any casualties in this particular launch, how would CNES be able to respond to that? How would they recover from the embarrassment and the level of shared responsibility that they would have for this ill-fated mission? And incidentally, what happened with this rocket anyway? I mean, why did the parachute system not work on the booster? Because China supposedly introduced a paradrop recovery system into the first stage of all of their Long March 2C rockets, 
So what happened here? Did the parachute fail to deploy? Was it just never included on the booster in the first place? I mean, there really needs to be some accountability here. You're never going to get it from China, but as far as CNES is concerned, I really think they need to be held to account for being a part of this in the first place, even though no casualties may have resulted from the launch, it still was grossly irresponsible to be a part of it. And another unfortunate consequence is the fact that the entire purpose of the mission has been eclipsed by this incident because it is a very fascinating mission indeed. It is the study of gamma ray bursts, which remain an extremely complicated and mysterious part of our universe. The two telescopes that are on board designed to detect and localize gamma bursts in the X-ray band are French-made along with what's called the MXT telescope for the observation of gamma ray bursts in the soft X-ray range. That was actually a combined French, German, and British project. Then there's the GRM, the Gamma Ray Burst Monitor, which was put out by China to measure the spectrum of high energy bursts. And finally, the VT telescope or visible telescope operating the visible range to detect and observe the visible emissions produced immediately after a gamma ray burst. The satellite weighed a little over a metric ton with a payload of about 450 kilograms and it was placed in low earth orbit. Oh yeah, that's also something that should be mentioned. The payload was actually successfully delivered. The mission technically was a success and if they had just responsibly launched it from a spaceport where these sorts of things are not a possibility, well, there would have been no problem whatsoever. But instead, China continues to show a blatant disregard for human safety, and no scientific discovery is worth this kind of risk. I would like to thank the following incredible people, Nick Pearson, Cedric Hunter, James Gibson, Peter Stoyanov, Paul Scott, Zeus567, Charlie Anderson, Pedro, John Koch, Bon Shaw, Ben Rabau, James Workman, Don Sander, Stephen Higley, Stephen Yi, Taylor Knox, Bernd Elkman, Anthony Dyson. Thank you so much for your support in becoming new Patreon members. In addition, a large number of people supported me on PayPal as well. I will also be happy to acknowledge you folks in a future video because you all did so much to contribute to get me back to the UK. In addition, I got a little bit extra and I'm going to use that to get me to Saxavord up to the Shetland Islands so I can bring you some truly amazing coverage of the first ever vertical orbital mission from Western Europe, or at least a mission that is not a sounding rocket. It is going to be so exciting. By the way, the rocket, the RFA-1, has a similar capability to the Long March 2C, so it's probably going to be quite an amazing thing to see close up. And in addition to that, because they're launching it from a responsible location, Saxavord is, after all, on an island with launch trajectories that pass over open ocean and nothing else, well, this is a responsible mission that we can all get behind. Please like, please subscribe, and as always, stay angry about space.